there, it's Carrie Byron, formerly of Mythbusters, and now from the show Crash Test World. I'm about to watch some Dr. Stone for the very first time and formulate a few thoughts about it. That makes sense. Agriculture. I learned this during Thanksgiving when I was in grade school. You can use the shells for a fertilizer. Legit. This! I've done this! You aerate any sort of powder and light it on fire. We actually blew up a whole tube of coffee creamer and almost um, set ourselves on fire. Sinku's kitchen. この温泉で取れ放題の異様、小酸カリ、異様、木炭をぶち込んだもんに隠し味で。Oh, I mean, when you start to see the sparks on the black powder, do you really gather close to check it out? That is just rule number one. That recipe is legit because I have a lot of black powder. It's 75% potassium nitrate. It's 15% sulfur and 10% charcoal, I believe. And it is harder than you think to light this stuff. So he is totally right, man. You cannot just bang it with a rock. And the little boost of sugar, that's, that. we've actually taken some uh, like gummy bears and set them on fire just because they have such a high sugar content that it gave it a little extra oomph. So I, I, I feel like that was that was a really good plan. I feel like I could be friends with Sinku in this world. Okay, so now that I've seen Sinku do it, I feel like making gunpowder is on my bucket list. Okay, so they're, they're trying to make a super high, high heat by, they're basically doubling the heat with the um, bellows by hand. I mean, I, that would take a lot of work. Sure, why not? <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to pull it off. I feel like sooner or later your arms are going to drop off, but I also have never had fire emit from my eyes because I've worked that hard. Yeah, we've stoked some fires with bellows before. I'm trying to remember specifically, but um, if I ever needed to make something hotter, I generally would just use compressed air. Blow torches and all of the things you can use in the shop. A lot easier than creating all this stuff by hand. You gotta give it to them. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't always strike exactly where you want it to, especially in nature, but you know, this is a little creative license. I'll let it go. I had no idea that Sinka was going to make a magnet with the iron. That is such a cool idea. Quickly, change the polarity! I love this clip. Magnets are the closest thing I swear that we have to magic in the real world. Sometimes we'd have magnets so strong in the shop that we would actually be scared. Jamie loved magnets. You can use the different polarities of the magnets to create electricity and create a generator. I think all of these things are better on paper than real life. We did the Ben Franklin experiment with the key and we went to where they create lightning so that you could get the electricity to come down on, onto it. I've also seen somebody get struck by lightning, but that was pretty gnarly. <laughs> What's happening here? Are they making lenses for glasses? What are they making? Oh, it's so sweet. They're making glasses. I have no idea if this would work, but it sounds good. You know, they could use that too for, you know, magnifying the sun and focusing some light and they could create the fire they need. I've worked with glass and lenses quite a bit, but we, we definitely did some glass blowing and created some neon signs with glass, but nothing of this nature. We, we, uh, we took ice and we made it into as much of a perfect lens as we could. I used my hands to make almost a sphere with my ice. And if you get it clear enough, you can actually focus the sun. I was able to get some uh, tinder smoking because 
you know, the idea was that we could create fire with ice. It was a really long process to get to that point though. It's hard to make ice in the sun. Are they making cotton candy? <laughs> they are making cotton candy! <laughs> yes, they are going to use... They're going to take the gold and just like cotton candy, they're going to spin out long wires so they can create electronics. That's brilliant. Oh, they're spinning the cotton candy. Ooh, molten sugar! Fluffy soft cloud. <laughs> I mean, I love cotton candy too, but that was quite a reaction. They were very excited for that cotton candy. <laughs> I mean, cotton candy in the future Stone Age, that's pretty exciting. I love that they're making cotton candy just to test out the materials. I've made a still so that I could create rocket fuel before. And they're using potato wine, so I'm, I'm guessing that if I just took that a little further, maybe I could have created some sort of cotton candy. I don't know, like what do you need more, a rocket or, or cotton candy? That's fuel for the soul. Oh. They're making a battery. I've done this. This is a fun experiment. <laughs> I think we've done this exact thing. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, this is some some old tech. Absolutely, this is some science class stuff right here. It's really hard to get some serious electricity out of that kind of battery, but I mean, it'll do it. It's just not gonna be enough to like fire somebody into the air so that their hair glows. What you got there? Ultraleaf. <laughs> 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 I was wondering what they got there. Looks like they had adamantium for a minute. They're use they're using it in filament. So they're going to create light bulbs. <laughs> I have no, I have not watched the show. <laughs> These are just educated guesses. What is this contraption? The flare! I have never tried to make magnesium with seawater ever. So I, I can't legitimize it for you, but uh, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, print Coco, I have one in my garage. <laughs> yes, we're going to print T-shirts with our print Gokos that we make in the future. <laughs> I have a print Goko. Yeah, so basically it's this little gadget that's almost like a screen printer where you draw a picture and you put it on a little film and then a, you push down, a bright light goes and burns a screen for you. And then you use that screen and you screen print. And so I make, I used to make invitations and t-shirts with it. A really common arty thing from when I was a youth. That's why you said ask your parents. Magnesium burns are really, really, really bright. Flares are a really great way to set fires quickly and um, fires that are airborne. So if you have a big plume, for instance, if you crushed up all of those seashells and you know you aerated them through the air and then you threw a flare into them, it would create a big fire cloud. So there's so many uses for all of these gadgets if you put them together. Like, you know, you want a big burning fireball, there you go. Okay, so they're taking honeycomb so that they can make it into wax and then do a lost wax casting so that they can cast an engine part to create a steam engine. This is very intricate. That's a that's a lot of creation right there. 
I'm gonna go with, yes, this is possible. Really hard to do, but I'm feeling like Sinchu could do anything. I mean, we all know steam engines work and that is a legitimate way to cast something in from, from hot metal that you seem to be able to create by using bellows <laughs> to melt iron down into a molten form. And <laughs> this is, I mean, it's just a lot of work. And none of them are wearing protective gear. After watching Dr. Stone today, I can see that I am about to be a big fan of this show. It is like anime Mythbusters. I think that Sinku would be probably the ultimate Mythbuster because he sort of captures the best parts of everyone who is on my team. I think my kid's gonna love this show. I mean, just for the big reactions alone. That's my favorite part about anime is like, everything is like, just the big emotion. Thanks guys, this is Carrie Byron, formerly of Mythbusters. Don't forget to watch Dr. Stone, season two on Crunchyroll.